Hi, I'm Julia. And I'm Chris. And today's big idea is God helps us live the best way. Now, Julia, have you ever been working on something and realized there was probably a way better way to do it? Definitely. I love baking, and I used to put the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients, but then my friend told me that if I put the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients, then flour doesn't go everywhere. Yeah, that's a good tip. So let's watch today's God story and see what we can learn. Our scripture passage is, <laughs> where is it? On the behalf of Israel. To the book. Oh! Hey everyone, it's me, Jamie Robertson, and you are you, and let's dig in. All right, so back when I was in high school, we had to get immunizations done. It was like grade nine or grade 10, I can't remember what. So myself and a few friends were waiting in the nurse's office ready to get our shots. And they give you like a little piece of paper with, you know, what to do, what to expect, blah, blah, blah. And at the very top, in bold, it said, when you receive your needle, do not flex your muscles. So my friends, being the awesome guys that they are, and because I was first, said, hey, Jamie, you should flex your arms. And because they're my friends and always have my best interests at heart, of course I agreed. I was gonna be the coolest of the guys. So I go in there, and just as the nurse is about to stick the needle in, I flex my arm as the needle goes in. And I'll never forget her face. She looks at me, she's like, you're an idiot. I don't think I've ever had a shoulder that sore. That needle into the muscle <laughs> ruined me. And I tell you that story for two reasons. One, friends are really important to have a really good, fulfilling life. And two, as much as we hate to admit this sometimes, sometimes the rules are actually there to help us and protect us. And that is what we're gonna look at in the story of Moses today, because our big idea, God helps us live the best way. So our scripture for today is in Exodus chapter 18, verse eight. Now Moses told his father-in-law everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh and Egypt on behalf of Israel. He also told about all the hardships they had experienced along the way and how the Lord had rescued his people from all their troubles. So what does it mean to live a good life? Well, Jethro is Moses' father-in-law. So uh, Moses' wife, this is, this is her dad. And he comes and he sees how Moses is leading the people. Everybody's coming to him with all their problems and their concerns, and he is there and he's helping them. Well, Jethro grows concerned that his son-in-law is going to burn out, that always dealing with everybody else's problems is going to not give him time to sort of reflect and be who he is. So Jethro offers some great advice, and he, and he counsels Moses to have other people around to help support him. And that is what is so central to your best way of life is be surrounded by good people that know you and love you and want to help you. Uh, C.S. Lewis once talked about, he's a romantic love has naked bodies, but friendship has naked souls. And that leads us to the next part, because part about being community is not just rules for the sake of rules, it's how do we conduct ourselves in ways that not only take care of ourselves, but take care of the other people that are closest to us. And this is at the heart of the 10 Commandments. This is God showing his people, his Israelites, the ones he's saved from slavery, who he is and who they are called to be to find their best way. And their best way is connected to him and to each other. Which is why the first four of the Ten Commandments have to deal with their uh, relationship with God. Don't have any other gods besides me. I'm the one who's gonna rescue you. Don't say that you're my follower and then act cruel and unkind. Don't take my name in vain. Don't treat my name as if, it, it, as if it's meaningless because it has tremendous power and tremendous meaning, not just for who I am, but for how I'm going to help you. And then the last six of the Ten Commandments have to do with how you deal with everybody else. Don't lie to other people. Don't steal from them. Don't kill them. I think we can all agree on that one. But even some great ones like your neighbor may have something that you really like. Your friends may have something amazing that you're like, oh, I really want that. And God himself says, don't get caught up with that. Don't look at what other people have and, and, and want it because that can lead you to, to lying and to theft and to all sorts of just internal dis-ease. 
uh, not able to see all the gifts that you yourself have. So I really want to make sure that you understand that being in community does not mean that you are called to blend in. It's actually a place to help you stand out and be uh, more yourself. And a perfect example of that from Moses' story is when it's time for the people to receive the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites are terrified. There's the, there's the smoke, there's the presence of God, the, the dark, foreboding presence of God that actually leads to enlightenment and peace. But the people are terrified and they can't see past their fear. And so they ask Moses, you go talk to God and then come back and, and, and tell us what God says. We'll talk to you, we just don't want to talk directly to God. And that is the unique place that Moses, as their leader, finds himself in. It's his connection to the community that actually gives him the unique place to be uh, who he is in service to everyone else. And that is the point I'm trying to make to you. Part of being in community and doing this stuff, it's not to make you homogenous. It's not to make you like everybody else. We're not creating zombies here. We're actually giving you a space to be the most you you can be. Later on in, in, in Christian history, we're gonna talk about everybody having the Imago Day which is just a fancy Latin phrase for the image of God. Every single human being has the image of the divine within them, including you. And when you recognize that the image of God dwells within you and dwells within all the other people, then the rules are there just to honor who you are and honor who they are in your connection to who God is and how much you are known, how much you are loved. So our big idea has to deal with not just having friends and not just having the rules, but having an understanding that together and in, in combination of that, you can find your way to the best way of living life with God, with each other, and with yourself. All right, that's it for now. Enjoy your community, and enjoy who you are, and we'll talk to you soon. So Jethro had some really good advice for Moses. I mean, from the help of those other people, they were able to solve all of those Israelites' problems and listen to all of them, and they all benefited from it. Yeah, that was great that he found a better way to deal with everyone's problems. And it reminds me how I found a better way to bake. Sometimes people speak directly into our lives, but we can also get new ideas from reading books or watching movies. Let's watch this video with Michael and see how he had positive change in his life. Growing up, I was more or less forced to go to church on Sunday mornings, whereas I wanted to play basketball, play soccer, hang out with my friends, or even just play video games or watch TV on Sunday mornings. So I started playing soccer at the age of 14. It's pretty late. I wanted to score all the goals. I wanted to get all the glory. I just loved running around. I loved the strategy to soccer and going to the neighborhood and having a pickup game ready and, and just having fun with other people. So I was born in Canada, but my parents are from Ghana. And the year that I started to play soccer was the 2010 World Cup. We lost a really sad game. And so I was just motivated to become a professional player and ultimately play for Ghana and lead them back to the World Cup and hopefully win. For soccer, I just did everything I could on my own to be a better player. So I'd run around the neighborhood, get my fitness in, do individual skill work, or even travel halfway across the city to play at the rec centers in downtown or pick up fields in obscure areas of the city, uh, just so that I could challenge myself against other people. Most of my friends thought I was kind of crazy, especially some of the things that I would tell them I would do. They said, you're wasting your time, what are you doing? And my parents as well, um, specifically my mom, wasn't really on board with it because she thought it would be a distraction to my education and getting ready to hopefully get into a university. It did kind of hurt sometimes that I didn't have that support on game days and, and even practicing as well. Throughout university, I progressed as a player, and I also became a captain of the university that I went to. I believed that I could lead the team to, to victory and to success in the league, but I focused on the status and not so much the leadership qualities that would help our team get there. And at the same time, I also focused on becoming an all-star. I started to reflect on my life after my second year at the university. Soccer wasn't going well, school was okay, but I could have done better. And my relationships with my family and some of my friends were starting to deteriorate. Ultimately, I wasn't really feeling good about myself. I wasn't in a great mental state. Physically, it had some effects on me as well. And that led me to coming upon a book 
that talked about some important principles that the author learned from God, but the most important were from the book of Proverbs and how simple lessons of wisdom from God could allow him to live his life in this world fruitfully and full of purpose. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Let someone else praise you, not your own mouth, a stranger, not your own lips. The Bible that I was reading the book of Proverbs in was one of those small uh, Proverbs and Psalms and, and Gospel Bibles. And after I finished reading the book of Proverbs, I said, well, the Gospels are here, why not? So I had this small Bible with me and on the train to work, on the subway to work, I would just read and read and read. And I was like, man, this Jesus guy is really cool. There were also some people at my, at my job at the time that were pouring into me. So I did a co-op at the Toronto District School Board and oftentimes I would go to schools to do my work and I'd walk the halls and ultimately I saw some of the kids and, and the youth in these schools and I said, I want to get involved. And after that I just quickly got into it and I, and I fell in love with working with kids and also sharing my love for soccer with them as well. There was a point in time where soccer was my God and I think that those talents and those gifts that God gave me were to be used. And so I did think about quitting soccer, I, I truly did, but I realized that I had so much to share and that's why I continued to play and that's why I started to see what I had as a platform and to be able to share my faith with other people through that. My name is Michael Manu. I went from falling in love with soccer to allowing it to become the God of my life. And nowadays, I serve God and play soccer for God and glorify Him through that. Wow, Michael was not afraid to dream big. Yeah, but in the process of dreaming big, he was focused on himself and he didn't have good relationships with the people around him. Yeah, but then God changed his life dramatically and now he can invest his time and energy into changing other people's lives. I love that. Let's get into our small groups and talk about how we see this in our lives. 